Hi, everyone. Welcome to Here for the Health of It podcast. We have the owners of Hotel Trundle today. We have Rita Patel and Marcus Munsey. They will talk about all things Hotel Trundle. It's a boutique hotel in Colombia, making a big name for itself. They get into everything from um, being married and running it together to their family life to what their vision is for this hotel. So I hope you enjoy. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Music. <laughs> Welcome to Here for the Health of It podcast. I'm Dr. Randy here with Dr. Tom. As always, we are Columbia's hottest podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Tuning in. Um, we have a great get. We have two great guests today. We have the co-owners of Hotel Trundle, which is a big deal in Columbia. Um, <laughs> we have Rita Patel and Marcus Muncy. You guys have been married for 14 years. You just told me, mm -hmm. um, and you're on this hotel journey. Tell tell us a little bit about how you started it. Well, first, thank you so much for inviting us to come and yeah. chat about our little slice of life. Um, so we opened Hotel Trundle in April of 2018. So we we're six years old this, this month, too. Cool. And um, it was just pretty much born from, you know, years and years in the branded hotel space. And um, Marcus and I, you know, we we're educated by uh th with architecture so we both are architects by education oh, no kidding yeah and then that's what we met in grad school and um when we got married in 2010 there was no work for architects so we had to actually move back in with my parents in orangeburg i got laid off yeah funny. yeah oh so you went <laughs> you went mother-in-law oh, all day like, every uh, day brand new in yeah. marriage <laughs> yes got laid off from the firm i was working at in charlotte like three weeks before the wedding Wow. It was, it was oh, great. No. Just kept yeah, getting like layoff round, layoff round. And yeah. finally mine, mine was called. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any tips for living with your in-laws for newly married couples out there? Mm. Uh, yeah, I guess don't, uh, don't have too much fun with your father-in-law. <laughs> yeah. You know, you become like best friends and then you're like, oh, well, this is, Rita's like, looks like you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I have a great time. So bad. We might we might stay here for a few more years. Yeah, I'm like, uh, don't get too comfortable. But um, it, but I think it was really great because Marcus is not of the same background I am. So it was a really great opportunity. They love Marcus. We were engaged for a while. Um, but it was a really great opportunity for my parents to get to know Marcus on a, a level like I do in a way. And so it really kind of solidified a relationship that I don't think would be as strong as it is now had those, you know, those, those several months of hardship happen. <clears throat> right. So. And it's not like that just happened and then we decided, okay, well, let's do the hotel thing. Right, right. Like we just, I was the maintenance guy at a new hotel or parents that just opened because I, you know, need a job. I'm pretty handy. Rita was like, yeah, okay, I'll work the front desk. Um, we taught. 8.50 an hour back yeah. then, okay? Yeah. Or with yeah. an architect degree. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And working for your in-laws. <laughs> yep. Yes. And then we taught night school at a community college. We taught, like, design work and, like, AutoCAD and Revit. And we we took and seven jobs together for yeah. two, two no and a half kidding. years. Yeah. We, it was tight. It was tough. And, and we, we just, like, okay, it'll come back, and we'll, we'll be able to get our jobs as architects and move to New York and, you know, live it up. Never did. No. Really? <laughs> yeah. Well, during those two and a half years where we were from like 2010 to 2012, we um, just fell in love with Columbia. And it was just so, so much different than I remember it being growing up. And um, we found a really great house in Cottontown that we still live in. And um, we just started settling in and our roots were became deep and we didn't want to leave. And then we had our first son in 2014 and it's really nice being close to my parents and his, his family's only a couple hours away. So it was, mm -hmm. it was nice and I love it. I would never leave. Yeah. What's it like becoming an architect? Because that's always like, I don't know. We never became an architect. You guys never really <laughs> ended up. <laughs> <laughs> we never got uh, licensed. I th see, because yeah. that's wild. Because I think of like the the old Seinfeld episode where it was like George pretended, or maybe yeah, yeah. Well, yes. I don't see architecture coming yeah. from you. Yeah, yeah. 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 architect. Yes, George, we uh, love that. Episode. Art Vandalay. Yes, Art, Art Vandalay. Yes. Oh, <laughs> so you guys never ended up. You went through all the schooling and never got the license. We both practice professionally. Mm -hmm. um, Is it like more of a draft? Like, are you guys considered more draftsmen? Then are you allowed to say you're an architect? 
you no, you can't. That's why we say, say architects that. by education. Yeah. So you have to Smart. sit through an apprenticeship. So yeah. and it's called an internship. Gotcha. And so I actually interned for a couple of years before at a company at a firm here in Columbia. <clears throat> after I was able to leave that two and a half year struggle. Yeah. But um, ended mm -hmm. up not really liking architecture. It's very technical. Sure. Um, I have an undergrad degree in interiors, which I absolutely love and is I'm the happiest when I'm doing interiors. Like decorating and yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Which I like all the technical stuff. So, I, so that worked out great. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to talking about the systems and structure and everything else, I, that's, like, oh, I love that. She yeah, puts yeah. her to sleep, the vice versa. But so. Do you guys have any <laughs> tattoos that would be like architecture, like floor plans or a protractor or anything that's like a that? That's good idea. No, no, I can't no confirm or deny any kind of tattoos. No or low back protractor. No, no. I will not confirm or deny anything. All right. All right. The art. Well, the architect scene in Columbia seems like there's not a lot of architects, and that was my experience when we were building this place. Is we were trying to find an architect that oh. could see the vision that we wanted. Yeah. And they would either not show up. Or they would show up and then wouldn't call us back for three weeks. Oh, or they would send us a quote for triple what we think it should be. And uh, they would kind of looked at us like, take it or leave it. We don't really care. We have so much business. So I, maybe the architect isn't oh. for everybody and there's not enough of them now. Is that possible? That's unfortunate. I'm sorry that happened. Yeah. Um, well, if you ever find yourself needing another architect, give us a call. I'll let you know. We and you can practice many, with that. You can, go, you can go to your <laughs> no, no, internship and, and practice with that. We would do it. some great architects. We, so. we, the architects do you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We, yeah. We'd be interested. Yeah. We've worked with several really great architects around town. And um, and that's kind of like, we may not practice architecture formally, but it definitely has been a key skill to bring to the table right. when we are making these deals or going after projects and things like that, because we already know what we're seeing and envisioning. And then mm -hmm. we have the tools and the yeah. skills to kind of express that. Yeah. It's like hotel Trundle was a, a horror show when we went into the buildings. <sighs> right. And we're like, Oh, this is great. I know you're looking yeah. around and yeah. it's like, everybody. Was like, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like you're know. not really sure what you can find. Yeah. <laughs> I was pregnant with our second son and they were about to do the asbestos abatement a couple of weeks later. <laughs> and I mean, I, I was going to, give birth like the next week or something. So I was like waddling around with a mask on and it was just, the ceiling tiles were just like hanging off and you could hear that like distant drip and yeah. just yeah. freaking <laughs> wind just and weird. all this stuff. It was just crazy. But, but when I saw it, it was just like, Oh wow, this is beautiful because it was just the masonry work that was exposed, the concrete floors, right. When we went upstairs, there's this whole wall, which is um, the unicorn suite. It was just this beautiful rose wallpaper on top of other wallpaper, and you can see like you could see it peeling back. And one of, one of the layers was um, a repeat print of Monticello, and it was just absolutely stunning. Cool. And I'm like, oh my! And, I, and there's this, you know these picture windows that go off on that look down on the main street. I'm sorry, Taylor Street. And I was just like looking at the wash and it was just yeah beautiful. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Columbia Family Chiropractic, with three easy to get to locations, one in Forest Acres, which is by Trader Joe's, one in O'Neill Court by the DMV, and one in the Northeast by Sand Hills. You'll be sure to have somewhere near you. Um, they offer a ton of services from corrective care, on-site digital x-rays, spinal decompression for bulging or herniated discs, dry needling for injuries, pediatric mm -hmm. care, and a class four laser. They accept all your major insurances. Um, and if you mention this ad, you'll get a discount on your first appointment. Check out their website at cfcforhealth.com or Google Columbia Family Chiropractic. That's cfc4forhealth.com. What was it before you guys took it over? Like it what was, was in that space? Well, or maybe, originally there was, originally yeah. there was Rose Talbert um, paints and wallpaper in one, uh, paints Western and Auto. Oh. Western Auto was in one, Powell Furniture, was the other, I think there was like Delco Electric upstairs, uh, an Sears an Automotive store. Parts Store in yeah. the back. Yeah, so it's actually three buildings. So two mm -hmm. two of them sister against each other. And then there's the third one, which is Powell Furniture, kind of pinwheels out. So our our footprint is an L. Gotcha. Yeah. And then uh, that church that's still owned by the church across the street, mm -hmm. right, like, like kind of wedged in between yeah. the, the uh, yeah. hospital there. 
Um, they owned it, but then when and we had gotten it, it was owned by the uh, Powell yes. Furniture Store on the Powell one, but the other two were owned by the hospital. And so you can still see when you walk in the lobby, like where we had to patch holes because they had just like embedded poles and did chain link fence all the way down really? the big oh, space I and kept about the chain link. Yeah. and they kept uh, like files and like X ray scans and stuff. Like that. Interesting. You know that stuff storage. you have to keep for That's like. Right. 50 years. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, like, did you guys find anything unique or wild in there when you were deconstructing all the history there? <clears throat> um, Not a great, I mean, it was really just a big open space. Oh, okay. I mean, so there nothing, were definitely... Like in the walls, they didn't hide any dolls or anything. We didn't see anything <laughs> suspicious. <laughs> and if we did, we could not confirm or deny that either. Really? No. Just now we, did, we have, and I'm sure we'll get to this, but we've... We've acquired another building in the Vista mm -hmm. that was not really no secret because it came out in the newspaper that we're looking to go to do the another Vista. Property. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And there is this spot in the basement that's kind of all brick been Creepy. bricked in, kind of new brick, and we don't really know what's in there. So there's a mat yeah, there's a up. mattress, a oh. shackle. I, I, we, no, we're there's hoping no it's way like, to get uh, in or out of it. Really? We had to like Marcus had to hoist me up and there's this little tiny void where you can like peek into yeah and it's all dark oh god it's really creepy I that's mean, so exciting yeah <laughs> we went, uh, that's, like, i'm really into that like this is gonna be a bathtub like mint printing things maybe or in maybe there we'll find some oh, treasure right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah it could, you could turn Spanish it into a little gold. sauna maybe mm. maybe I mean, it's That's designed where we're just going to be the, the laundry guests. room. <laughs> yeah. <I know>. yeah. <laughs> you make out. too much noise as you go down there. <laughs> yeah. So now, Rita, did you say your, so your parents were in the hotel industry? Yes. And that's kind of how you mm -hmm. guys evolved to, to wanting to open up a hotel? Yes, exactly. Were there any nightmares growing up in the hotel world where, you're, where you thought, like, we need to avoid? <laughs> yeah. Or... Tell us, yeah, like tell Her us and about all of that. Her siblings. They all yeah, are. I have yeah. three siblings. There's four of us. <laughs> um, so I grew up in Orangeburg, and my parents opened the first hotel. It was called Red Carpet Inn. Um, exit one fifty. A spinoff of Red Roof Inn. Mm, no, I think Red Carpet was before. Technically boutique. <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, it was. An, I'm not really sure. I'll have to check on that. Yeah. Though. Um, but they bought that in nineteen. 80, 1980. Okay. So, um, my dad, yeah, yeah. So I was not, I was one, I was born in 1980 okay. and we moved from Toronto to Chicago. And then from Chicago, we made it to South Carolina cause there was this opportunity to buy that red carpet in yeah. with my uncles my dad and my uncle bought that together. And my mom was a biochemist. And so she started teaching at a local high school. No, no, it was middle school. Um, in Orangeburg. So she was a teacher for 20, 25 years before she retired from that and joined the family business. And then from like 1980 to like 1990 ish, everything was analog, you know, mm -hmm. like you write the guest book, you write the receipt, even like right. hand mm -hmm. scan the credit card. Yes. And all that. You like count change and all that. But then in 1990, <laughs> when the computer was more accessible. <laughs> yeah. Um, my mom decided to modernize the business. Okay. And so she introduced the systems that the brands were kind right. of in, like, um, you know, like choice advantage for choice and all the online booking engines hey. and stuff like that. So nice. um, my mom was able to do that with my dad. And from there, they really kind of grew the business. So right. it's very stressful. I mean, I can imagine, I, you know, it's just, so I never saw myself being a hotelier. I, I really didn't. I did not want to do it. It's, it was a lot of work and because my dad and my mom didn't really have anything. They had to literally start from scratch. My dad said that, you know, when they were trying to buy the red carpet in, they went on a national road trip mm -hmm. to go visit close family friends and ask for $10,000 each. Whoa. No kidding. So they had to go and like fundraise, you know, and on handshakes, you know, family, friends. Wow. And stuff like that. So, which, you know, we couldn't really do. Like if I asked my best friend for 10,000 bucks, she'd give right. it to me, but I'm sure we'd arrange some signatures. Right. You know? <laughs> Love her to death. She actually works with, with us. Her name is Raven. Um, I've got some 
parents have some awesome stories. I mean, they're great. You should interview them. You should interview them. That's crazy. It's it's insane how people used to hustle and do business, and especially as a first generation. I mean, they were both born in India, so you it is the classic. I came right five dollars in my pocket kind of thing. And so when we were starting out Hotel Trendle, my mom, you know, from all of that, um, we worked in. I worked in. I'm fast forwarding to 2012 now. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have built this really great portfolio of businesses and, um, even dabbled in restaurants and stuff. And so when we're finally like, have both of us have committed to Curtis management, which is their company, we're like, mom and dad, millennials are traveling. They don't want the stuff that sure. we're putting out, you know, yeah. if we don't keep up with everything on our own intuition <coughs> not what the brands are telling us is happening um we're gonna fall behind and so we finally convinced them that the boutique hotel space is something that they should really invest in so us having really great ideas and backgrounds in architecture we were able to do to do that and we rode around columbia and looked at the historical <coughs> properties that because at that time which they still do exist a really great tax incentives for um, preserving abandoned buildings or historic buildings, which we wanted both. So that's how hotel trundle came around. We saw those and that's, it's a long story, but those were actually um, under lease agreements because they had already started another tax incentive project on that project. So Marcus and I, my mom, I remember my mom saying, she's like, well, they weren't, they weren't leased yet. They were looking for tenants. Yeah. They were looking for tenants to fill the space. Um, so I remember my mom was like, maybe you, you and Marcus could do it on your own. And I'm like, well, if mom thinks I can do it, okay, maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe we can. Right. So I remember going to Marcus and I'm like, maybe let's, let's throw some floor plans down and see how many rooms we can get. So we did, and we got 41 rooms and we're like, sure, we can do this. <laughs> no yeah. freaking problem. We got this. <coughs> Develop so. a brand. And by some miracle. <laughs> Everyone agreed to it, and here we are six years later. I mean, it was it was crazy because pretty soon not leasing anymore. Yeah, we're going to be we buying our buildings. Really, year. I was wondering about that. So wow. yeah, so all those tax That's credits cool. had to run out over five years, and yeah. it was already kind of pre-negotiated in that we could buy it after the tax credits ran out. So yeah, there's us and Boudreaux Architects. Yeah, is um, highly recommend. The floor. By the way, yeah. oh, okay. Nice. Um, so we're both going to buy the buildings. <laughs> I mean, uh, kind of the yeah. spaces out. Sweet. And so that's really exciting. I mean, and the yeah. opportunity was that we didn't need a, a lot of capital up front to buy anything. We were, we got loans, which my parents signed for, you know, when right. we, we didn't have FFA. any money. Right, so right. It was, it was nuts. It was, it was crazy. That's why our, our logo mark is the unicorn because it's a unicorn opportunity. And somebody asked me, like, what does that mean? Like, what's a unicorn? Yeah, opinion? I was gonna want I was wondering that. <clears throat> yeah, it's like a situation that's so rare and unbelievable that it's the unicorn. Yes. It's like it's something that you would always dream of or wish would happen, but it just always seemed like that's just too good to be true. Right. And Hotel Trundle, the opportunity that came around, it was really that for us. It was like every, it was like too good to be true. It was like, and I still yeah. think like what would have happened if we had just said no? It's too risky, right? But no, it's my parents pushed us off the cliff. For us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we changed our lives. Or if you wonderful. wouldn't have made the unicorn the logo, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I've always been scared of historic buildings as a purchaser. Okay, why? Can you speak to that a little bit? It sounds like there's a lot of rules mm -hmm. and a lot of risk to what can and can't be done. Maybe right. I just don't like being. He doesn't like HOAs. Do. He doesn't like. I do hate HOAs. Like well, I think I. I, I guess the happen. answer it, it all depends. So, if you're not pursuing any historic tax credits or anything like that, there's usually not really too many rules. You can just kind of do whatever you want. Right. Um, but if you want to, you know, take advantage of those and abandon building credits or state and federal tax credits, things like, then there is a lot of red tape. There's a lot of submittals. There's a lot of time to get the approvals yeah. back and, and all but that. But there are really but, great people that can do that for you. Yeah. And they just say, I need you to keep 20 of the original windows and the doors have to stay in the same place. Uh, so it's always from the uh, pedestrian's view. Area. 
the pedestrian's view yeah, probably but, takes precedent. And then there's different ones like uh, Bailey Bill, for example, for property tax, like has nothing to do with the interior. Like, hmm. so but if exterior. you're historic and federal tax credits, just, the interior is going to be involved in it. If you're, yeah. And if it's abandoned building, it has nothing to do with interior, but then there are some things that you could do modify the exterior. It depends on you know, how visible it is. So if you're like Tom and you just want to paint everything white, that they, doesn't matter. They paint, would the like you just paint it white. Was Except it painted exterior, already? Not, no, brick. <clears throat> no, not if it's brick. Not if it's unpainted, not if it's unpainted brick. It has brick. to but stay if it's painted that's, already. Then. If it's painted already, you can paint it. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Yellow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, but as far as the historic building, I mean, I we prefer them. I just think they have better bones. Oh like yeah, you cannot well. buy. I mean, <clears throat> if you look at the wooden members in any historic property, like we just renovated um, a new part of Hotel Trundle's collection called the Dens, and it's a residential duplex in Cottontown. It's zoned for, you know, commercial use, but if you just look at the pine um, that's in that house versus what you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's, it's just, there's no it's comparison. Yeah. It's like dense. Like true, true it's like two bias, true, right? Yeah, yeah. It's two inches, not right. one and, then and a the, quarter. And the flutter wing, I mean, they were two and a half inches the floor joists yeah and like, that was just i mean massive. it's just wow it's just incredible and why I mean, did that right change i always wondered why that changed like why did a two production. by four turn into not a two by four it's the shrinkage it shrinks <laughs> oh like so raw like raw cut is two by four i love the word shrinkage. It's <laughs> it's shrinkage. we're still on seinfeld um, a little bit <laughs> so it the two by four historically I think because the wood was so dense, yeah. didn't it didn't shrink as much. Shrink as much. Yeah. But now two it's by four. It's stiffer fours. and harder. <laughs> yes. Wow. Oh, you man. guys must not have an HR <laughs> department. Wait, you're looking at it. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, wow. Little, I know, is it? A little loose around here. Yeah. yeah I, yeah. I always wonder. I thought at one point check. they also because they were fact check they went also I, from plaster and all that kind of stuff and they went to Sheet rocket, which is half inch. So if you have a three and a half inch, uh -oh. two by four, three and a half, and then a half inch. Okay. Somebody missed okay. a class. I don't know. His sounds yeah. better. Uh, it, His sounds more correct as far as modern um, building. To be honest, I'm not really sure. It may stuff. just be because they realize structurally you don't really need right. more inch. So well, let's, let's save just call some it that. Yeah. Let's keep it the same. Know. Well, then why <laughs> do like two by tens? Well, they're nine and a quarter. I know. And a half. That's right. Once you get to a two by eight, it's it goes to seven and a quarter and two by tens, nine and a quarter. That's why you go to architecture school. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyway. All right. We'll keep it. Go. So you're Canadian. Are you Canadian? I was originally, but I'm a naturalized citizen. And you, did you give up? What, your is, Canadian that, how does that, what does that mean? So if you're born if you're born in a different country and you're able to get citizenship in the US, it's called naturalization. Oh, yep. I'm not. I was recently naturalized. Oh, where are you from? In December. Is that Canada? What? Ah. Yeah. But I kept my Canadian stuff. D how long did you live there? 20. He grew up okay, one so years. I was born there and I moved to the States when I was three, in, uh, three months or something like that. Oh. So you have to have a, well, now, I don't know, but I don't, maybe you can tell me when I was doing some research on it. You have to have a residence and live in that residence for two years before you can claim a, like a reason to be, like, have the dual Cin citizenship. Oh. So, I don't, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I don't know, no, because so I cannot escape to Canada if anything. <laughs> so ever you have happens. dual. I have dual citizenship. Okay, yeah, yeah. but thinks. there was no, but there was no reason to give up my Canadian citizenship. I was yeah, like, I'll just no keep reason. it. Yeah. I just want my U.S. citizenship. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Good for you. Right. Yeah, Thanks. my sister in law is like that too. Orangeburg is a little different than Toronto. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Your, parents, your parents, <laughs> your parents just thought, Don't "Hey, we're, we're sick of the, we're sick just of it's, it's colder." Orangeburg, that's the only yeah, Orangeburg is very good. And the side, Toronto is massive, yeah. and yeah. Orangeburg is not massive. Uh, no, it's not. No. And think, like in 1980, there were no Indian people there. I mean, I remember when I was in, I was just told my mom about this um, in middle school, and somebody asked me if I was Chinese. And I'm like, at the time, I was very, you know, embarrassed. I felt shame. Right. I'm like, what's wrong with me? You know, like, and, um, but as adult, an adult, because I, I think about that a lot. And I'm like, it's probably because that person 
had not been educated about India or the people right. from India. Right. Like they had never seen an Indian person before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, you know, now we're so global. Um, but back then the World Wide Web did not in <laughs> right. exist. So right. anyway, um, it was a it was tough being different in in a small town where everyone looked this way or that way. Um Definitely talk about that a lot with my therapist, and that's okay. Really? Still some stuff that's sitting with you? Yeah, I mean, like, as a, as a child, um, you know, I didn't want to be different. I wanted right. to be like everybody else, so I really stunted my culture, which is beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I really regret feeling so much shame about being Indian and celebrating my culture. And, right. Um, so now with my kids, we do that as much as we can, and my parents really help us with that, too. So. Yeah. Um, but as an adult, I mean, I love who I am. I love sure. being different. I love my country that I was, you know, you know, my ancestors are from, you know, but I love America and I love, you know, I have the best of both worlds. So yeah. It's good. Yeah. Great. Thank God you're not Canadian anymore. My goodness. Yeah, she said she didn't love Canada. She said that. Yeah. <laughs> no, my mom's family. <laughs> just get it out of here. Yeah. No, you don't have to give it up. No, no, no just get it my out. My mom's uh, family still lives in Canada. So, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Nice. India, there, there's a big Indian <clears throat> population yeah. in Toronto, especially. I yes, think. there are. Because what, ha so Indian people would immigrate to either England or Canada. And I'm not sure if it's because of the British rule and because at one point, you know, Britain used to rule over India. And at one point, people would leave India and go to England because at certain one, I'm, I'm making shit up now. <laughs> it sound, <laughs> I listen, it sounded show. really good. <laughs> no, this is what happened with my grandfather. My grandfather immigrated to Canada. I mean, sorry, England. And, um, I'm I'm really not even sure how he did it. But then my oldest uncle went and they like did the whole thing, set up everything for the family yep. and brought each one over one by one. Yeah. And then um at one point I think um amnesty was given to everybody that was illegally in or I don't know if they were illegal or not. Like we were Yeah. I'm I don't know if illegal right I don't know if illegal was a thing back then. <laughs> right. I don't know because it was still all Britain's rule. Right. I have no idea. I should know. Um, but anyway, so that's how my dad ended up in England. My grandfather moved to Canada because he was a science professor at Toronto, University mm -hmm. of Toronto. Yeah, your grandfather, I mean, your mom's dad. Yeah, right? my mom's dad. Yeah, but your dad was still in England. My dad was still in England, yeah. With yeah. His family. And then my dad got a job in Canada as a machinist. And um, that's how they met. Nice. Do you ever go back to India? Like, do you travel there a lot? I have not gone as an adult. Um, the last time I went was like. Like, I wonder what's happening over there. Yeah. Um, I just sometimes think about India and think, what is going on? Just. <laughs> oh, boy. You've been to India. Well, you I've went been there. to India. Okay. For yeah, I went there for two weeks. Yeah. It was Where cool. Where did you go? So we flew into Hyderabad. Okay. And then we did a trip to see the Taj Mahal, yeah. which where is that at? I forget the city. Um, I Agra? Yeah. Which we did a train, which was That's wild. That's North India. Okay. Yep. Was it beautiful? It was great. But there's just so, there were so many people. Yeah. And I, here was my takeaway from India was like, it's like open, it's like turning on your oven, opening the door and just putting your face right there. It's very hot. It just felt like you're. When did you go? What? 2010 and it was summer right Ooh, yeah you yeah, i think it was summer, summer. yeah like so June. most of uh, yeah, mo yeah, like, like your dad goes every year like in january yeah in january is the best time to go yeah but i just thought there's so many people and like uh, trying to understand how the culture works because we would go into schools so what we were doing was like just adjusting people and you know in anywhere there was people would just gather mm -hmm. and i just thought like what are they what are all these people doing day to day? Like, in other words, are they, do they have a means to make a living? Is like, what's their, how are they eating? Where are they sleeping? Does that uh, make sense? I wish I could answer those questions. I mean, I can only tell you, like, you know, I'm not an India expert. You know, I grew right. up here. So right. um, when I went, you know, so India is made up of states. 
and every state there's could speak a different language. So it's right. Um, so I grew up in the Gujarat state, which is the eastern part of India. Yeah. In my state, I then lived in well, my father is from a village called Varad. And most of the people in that village are sugarcane farmers. Gotcha. And so living you know, off the land kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Like landowners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um you know, that's what my grandfather did. That's what my dad grew up and un- grew up understanding, you know, doing. I mean, sure. And he it was like the hotel business. Like we were working the front desk and folding towels and he was helping with the sugar cane. But I also went to school and did all those things right. too, like normal people. Um, but but yeah, there's also a caste system in India. So <clears throat> that's that's where like the last names Correct. kind of come right. And mean something, right? Right. And yeah. you hold on to it. Yeah, right. Yeah. So if your if your last name is of a, whatever it is, then this is kind of your bubble of things that you you gotcha. you do. And then it, it just like in culture, it's just like really bad to go outside of that without permission or something. Or I mean, I I think we're getting in the weeds here because yeah. I don't really know if I want to talk about all this stuff right, because. Right, right. I don't want to misrepresent for sure my entire culture by my ignorance. Right. So, I mean, clearly Marcus is not in my cast. So right. I think it just depends on what your family, your personal family yes. views are and like how you want your kids and your family to be. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, I can't, I can't speak to the whole culture, but I do encourage you to visit Richland library and read some read books. About it. Yeah. <laughs> watch, watch some videos. Yeah, watch some documentaries. Yeah, we have video. a great library. Yeah, I, like, I like to watch things. Yeah. Good. Do you eat a lot of like original Indian food or yeah. cook it? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, was talking to my, yeah, Marcus about this. Like I need to cook more Indian food. I, ha- I can do some basics, uh, mm-hmm. like rice and dal and there's, um, um, not curry, but it's called gutty and it's made out of yogurt. It's yogurt based. It's like a, a soup that you pour over rice. Um, I could do butter chicken. I used to, when Marcus and I yeah. were pregnant <laughs> with our first son, um, and we <coughs> were our first business. Yeah. Our first business was <laughs> daddy daughter, chicken, tikka and rice at soda city market. Like really? soda city market yeah. first started. Yeah. And yeah. we sold butter chicken. No cause, kidding. Yeah. Cause we needed to supplement our income to pay for daycare. Wow. Because daycare is like a whole nother yeah. salary. Yeah. Yep. And we spent a lot of time doing that and Didn't finally figured it out. Yeah. Like, right. this well, this was is it? not going to work. Daddy, daughter. Chicken, chicken tikka, tikka and rice. So dad would come over and help. Like, and I start. See. Yeah, like because my dad. In the morning. <laughs> getting yeah. Right. Right. And I was pro- it was like, yeah. when I say we were trying anything to make some money. But do, you know, find things that we're interested in. And that also was a wonderful time to spend with my mom and dad. You know, like we were all in it together and cooking Indian food. And, you know, it was nice to, and I have, I still have the journal that I wrote down all the notes and measurements and all that stuff. And um, the problem is that not a lot of people wanted Indian food in the morning. At 8 30 in the morning. <laughs> they may now. Yeah. But now there's like three <laughs> Indian vendors yeah. out there. Yeah, there's you, a can bunch of so, them. you can go to Soda City and um find any kind of right food, Venezuelan, yeah, you know, to Jamaican to Indian yes. too early. Yep. No, I, I mean I'll I'll eat Indian food. No, we were too early to oh, the Oh yeah, we yeah, yeah, we were yeah. <laughs> it's okay though. It was great. And we yeah. I, I love that part. It was Figured great. What we didn't want to I applied do. for well, my probably, first business license of, then. Uh, it was great. A lot of cool memories. I mean, that you'll know, you know what I mean? You'll be yeah. able to hold on to. So tell us, like, let's hear about your love story. When you guys met in school. Oh, Mary. And Keith. how did that, you're in <laughs> class. What class was it? Or maybe Acid it wasn't notes, in class. Maybe like tapped your shoulder. Can't probably say some of the comments that Rhea would make. <laughs> 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 she was i was in my final year in uh architecture oh, UNC Charlotte. older guy and well i'm actually, actually younger not, yeah really but she, she had done her undergrad at georgia they're two different programs so we graduated oh, gotcha. two different, he graduated from a five-year program i graduated from the three-year graduate program yeah so you did your undergrad and then went and worked a firm in atlanta and then came to grad school right and her first year was my last year right mm-hmm. um, so that's and he had cool. a girlfriend at the time we didn't yeah. start dating until Two years ago? Yeah. Two years ago, yeah. Right? yeah. I was working on a project at at in studio, and Marcus calls me, and he's like, 
hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm at studio. Because it was random as hell. What, and what is studio for us that don't know? Classrooms. Like the well, class. Um, yeah, in architecture, like, like a, so it, yeah, I guess it's kind of like weird to think lab? about. Like, hmm? It's more so like, like ours is more like a lab? big open space where you have your, like your drafting tables where right. you're building oh, models yeah, and yeah, doing yeah, all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. And yeah. Yep. I guess thinking back, it is weird in college to have like a designated desk like in a yeah, building. Yeah. You know, yeah. Like we that had our true, own yeah. desk. Oh. You know, that's our space. And because we came to the same building for like kind of hopping around classes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's studio. Yeah. Studio. You'd spend your entire life. Yeah. 24. Studio. I mean, it was intense, but. Um, so he calls you because he's been noticing you for yes. a few weeks. No, like we were, I, was, I had not seen, <laughs> no, I don't know what happened. He I hope said, not because I, I had been a in girlfriend. school for a couple of years. Yeah. Marcus was out. the windows. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Why don't you tell the story? I have, you know, like I can give you my what he's told me, but you know, it's probably better coming. Well, down. we just uh, was with some of my buddies, and they asked if I had talked to the grad girls lately because when we were there, the there was, Rita yeah. had her little click yeah. friends. They were the grad girls. Nice, I'm not clicky. <laughs> <laughs> Close. Well, you're four yeah. friends, so I said no, 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 no. So I, I really reach out. So I. Gave you a call or a text. Mm-hmm. And you said, let's work on a project? <laughs> um, no, I said, let's go get a beer. Really? With a, you had, and you have a girlfriend? No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. This I was, was like say, two years later. I had graduated. I was working. Um, at, That's at how we Charlotte. met originally. Oh, gotcha. We originally met. Fast forward yeah. a couple of years. Yeah. That happened. Nice. And, and then she said, of course, she I've been said, waiting she for you said, to ask me think about it. Yeah. No, I was like, okay. Because Marcus no, you is came so and met funny. me at Flying Saucer yeah. with like all your all your friends came, and I thought I was like I thought it was just look, cool. I knew like, oh. I didn't know you I thought, thought you were going to be bringing friends too. Yeah. By no, the way, she, the things no, well, and apparently she needed like an out. She needed to no. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 because I didn't know we were going to be on a date. Anyway, yeah. yeah, I thought we were getting together friends and friends. So yeah, yeah, I haven't. Yep. And so then um, we met, and then he came in by himself. And I was like, okay, y'all can go. I, clearly, this is supposed to be for me. And he was dressed so nice. <laughs> He's it, in a I suit think he was with wearing flowers. A, no, he, <laughs> he, he played <laughs> rugby. I played rugby in college. I was wearing like my rugby jersey. Oh my god! If, like, like, if you could see Marcus oh, back nice. then, he was a completely <laughs> different person. He had this whole like chin strap beard chin thing going on. He was bald. Oh, you had a ball. You were <laughs> I just you had a buzz cut. I was yeah. I was cheap, so I would just like cut my own hair. Yeah. Just, like one yeah. guard, the whole thing. Oh yeah. 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 Everybody had just, those. And days. then he had like <laughs> rugby shirt with bacon collar. I'm like, oh my lord, what is happening? But what I loved about Marcus and I still do is that he is so funny. And so that's what I just really enjoy. That's probably one of the things that made me fall in love with you. Yeah. I tell him all the time. I'm like, I just have the best time. Nice. It's so funny. And, and what about your first kiss? Do you remember that? Oh, he did I do it. I you knew I wanted to I knew you wanted, he, I, you know. he wanted I to set him up. <laughs> yeah. I do remember our first kiss. Um, yeah. Marcus made me um, stir fry mm-hmm. and... Um, Microwave. Uh, hairs, hairs. No. no, no, no. Really? Oh, yeah. It's real. Yeah. I didn't feel yeah. good though. I, yeah. I was nervous. Yeah, I think you were nervous. Yeah, that's probably what it was. Living in with my friend Jet on Harris Boulevard in our apartment. Mm-hmm. I was like, you got to go and go out and go to dinner or something like that. Somebody coming over. You're like, Jetty. things are going well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I think we were saying goodbye. We kissed and that was it. It was. Yeah. It was very sweet. Yeah. Nice. Magical. Um, that was a great love story. Yeah, that, that was yeah. that was, yeah, was not that exciting. You should ask how you proposed. Oh, is oh, that yeah. a good story? Yeah, yeah. Let's go there. Call me out on it. The one I wanted to do. No, oh, so a lot of pressure. Oh yeah, yeah it, like well, terrified. No, I. I mean, I don't know what I, I'm getting nervous talking about. That. <laughs> <laughs> Where was it? Rockville, Fort Mill, whatever they do that oh. Christmas town up there. And they were driving around. I said, oh, let's go "No, he here. came and got me from studio." I was like. Yeah. I, I think I had like not showered in a days because we had a jerk. Like we, when we <laughs> present your project, you, you put every single minute and second into the project. And I mean, you don't shower for days. Like you were just, I mean, yes. it's a lot of work. And he came and got me. And I think I was in, I don't even know what I was wearing. Probably sweats. My hair was disgusting. And I don't even think I had shoes on. <laughs> 
And he's like, come and get in. You must have because it was like Christmas time. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I do. And so. (laughs) And you're often out and about with those shoes? No, he said, come. Like, I'm going to pick you up and let's go get a coffee. I got you. I got you. Okay. uh, Christmas lights and stuff. Yeah. And then we went to Mooresville. Was it or the Christmas Mill Town or, or whatever. whatever it is? Yeah. And we were going around, and it's like one of those little areas where it's just the whole neighborhood blows up with Christmas yes. lights, and then there's yes. a procession all the way through it mm. and everything. And so we were doing that, and Marcus was like, "Come on, let's park and go walk around this one little pond area." I think because they had a bunch of Christmas lights. Yeah. Too. You're like, "What are you going to do? Propose?" No, no. <laughs> I'm like, just forget it. I'll take you back to the studio. I did. Forget about it. I did, but I didn't think it was. I didn't. I didn't know that that's what he was planning. Uh, I I was just like, I made a joke about it. And uh-huh. I, Cause I was like, it's so cold. Like I don't want to get out of the car and go look at Christmas lights over there. Like it's so freaking cold. <laughs> and so then um, we went back, you know, he dropped me off, back off at the studio and that was it. And then um, I went with him to a, he worked at a firm and they had won a preservation award. Was it a preservation award? Some kind of award. And um, they were presenting true. the firm with the award, and Marcus did a bunch of work on it, and so I joined him there. And um, afterwards, we went for a drink at Fox and the Hound in Char- Charlotte, mm-hmm. and we had drink and dinner. And then on our way to the car, he got down on one knee in the rain in the parking lot, and I was like, "Oh no!" Had to catch her off guard. She's gonna call me <laughs> right. out again. Exactly. That's yeah. great. <laughs> But there were no witnesses or grand oh, I love parties. And or no photos. Like that. There was no some photos. guy. I remember some like stranger because they saw. They're like, oh. Yeah, right. but I have nothing no, no, to remember. No. I just hope I don't ever forget that story. Now it's yeah. right. Now it's forever on a podcast. Now it's on so. Columbia's hottest podcast. Everybody hey. knows. Yep, that's right. That's right. You knew there was no risk of her saying no, though, right? You guys have kind of talked about it. Yeah, or was it risky? No, we already talked about it. You know what kind of ring she wanted. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I didn't pick it out, and I just wanted an oval one, which I have since gotten a new one. So, <laughs> did you go? Did you go round on this one? I did. I just went solitaire on on this one, but yeah. my my original one, which I still have, and I love it. It's oval. Yeah. How many prongs? Love it so Six. much you never wear. You it. know, my my wedding ring was <laughs> <laughs> my original one. Marcus had to take out a loan for it. And it took us two took him two two years to pay it off. I mean, yep. I I think it was twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. even the carrot. Even with the, um, the wedding band wasn't yeah. a carrot. Dang. And it's okay. I mean, like I was just I loved it. It's silver or white gold. So, you know, I, I wanted something gold when when we were able to afford something a little yeah. bit different. So, I still have it. Silver's coming back in, so I'm sure I'm going to exchange them. Yeah. Out. Why do women have to wear the same ring for their whole lives? Mm, good point. Why do men? Mm, I, that's point. your fourth wedding ring, third, my dear. Third. Randy's a big and loose like, wedding I've ring. I've been through ten, and it's currently <laughs> broken or lost. Oh no! But the only reason I had to, I had to replace them. Yeah. Well. Randy's got a guy's trip coming up, and somehow his ring get, like turns up oh, missing. Yeah. How convenient! There, people yeah, are like, "You don't wear a ring." I'm like, "Not on guys' trips." <laughs> oh my god! Jeez. No, that's that's not true. Oh I, my goodness! I was, he loses them like crazy I do, though. but it's because like you I guys go, are HR nightmares. Let me is. just say, it's, that. Bad. <laughs> it's like, bad news. Oh yeah, this you is might well want to bad. edit all that. <laughs> so how do you deal with this? This is like frat boys over here. <laughs> yep. Um, no, but in my defense. I when I I lift super heavy weights as you okay. can tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I was I'm wondering doing, when I walked in. Yeah, you were wondering <laughs> how my arms got so big. Yeah, yeah, it's because I lift heavy weights. And then also <laughs> when I was doing jujitsu, they they would keep being like, "You have to take it off." Yeah. I've seen guys' fingers get ripped off. Ooh. So then I would take it off, <laughs> and then I'd be so tired that I would like just forget stuff. And mm-hmm. Then I would go find it again, and then mm-hmm. the next night, and it just hey, yeah, it just look, it's off. not yeah. <laughs> yeah Whatever. there's always but something you can always maybe i need um, a tattoo of it that's yeah, what i was yeah. gonna suggest yeah. go ahead and get it i had those rubber ones that the have you tried those rubber ones before mm-hmm. there it was great but they same thing they just wear out and break mm-hmm. so you're mm-hmm. just constantly uh, getting a new one and then it wears out and then yeah. you get a new one huh. yeah so just take it off in general just don't even worry about it yeah, it's hard i mean the two hardest things about getting married for me were Wearing a wedding ring, getting used to that. That's the use of and, that too. Yeah. And sleeping in the same bed as somebody else, which nobody prepares you for how hard that is. Unless you get a king bed. <laughs> oh, yeah. A twin is really tough. To, oh, well, all the, it's just uncomfortable. <laughs> all of a sudden, there's parameters about when you go to bed, when you get up, how <laughs> you know, much you can roll room, over. But not really <laughs> yeah, bunk yeah. beds. Yeah. Temperature. 
cleaning oh, it. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, my, I would be like, you have to get up. We have to uh, make the bed. I'm like, can I just make it when I get up? <laughs> no, we're making it right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Do you have children? Uh, I have two daughters. Okay, how old are they? They're nine and six. Oh, okay. And I grew up my whole entire life with just boys. Yeah. I had two younger brothers. Oh. And then my two oldest cousins that we were really close to were both mm -hmm. boys. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never saw two women, two girls coming. But they're just hitting the age now where my oldest daughter is almost 10. We were talking about playing the piano because she has to play 20 minutes every day. Yeah. And everybody's been saying to me, you're gonna, they're gonna start getting sassy and they're gonna start mm -hmm. saying things. They're not just gonna be the sweet little uh, princess all the time. And she said to me the other day, the piano practicing is not the problem, Dad. You're the problem. <laughs> That's wow. great. And I said, oh boy, we got, a, we got seven or eight more years of this. What, what, what did she say? Why are you the problem? Well, she said that I did. <laughs> It was a whole he thing. He stands where over I, the stick and hits her. No, 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 no. <laughs> wow, <laughs> Catholic school. No, I just say you have to do it twenty minutes every day, and then I would say to them, "Have you practiced every day?" Okay. And I said, "I'm not driving you to piano and paying for this and doing all right, this right. if you're not going to practice." The piano mm -hmm. lessons are the time when you learn new things, not when you get to practice things that you should have already practiced. Yeah. And she said, "Well, I don't want you telling me when I should practice because you don't understand what I do in my spare time." Excuse and me, I said, the nine-year-old. Yeah, nine-year-old. Wow. And I said. I don't care what you do or when you do it, as long as you practice every day. And she okay. said, I don't, that's when she said, I don't think the piano practice is the problem. You're the problem. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of agree. Kids are logical too. It, and and it they made make a lot, lot of sense. Of, they do I, make a lot yeah, of sense. I did, and I didn't argue. I was like, listen, if you do it every day, I don't care. Yeah. I won't remind you ever again if mm -hmm. you just do it every day and I don't have to say anything. Right. Yeah. Prove it. But I mean, spare time, I have to, she has to. Hey, they knit. have agendas. She knits and reads for hours oh a day. Oh my gosh, I need to be friends with her. <laughs> she she sounds like my people. Every night I get home from work at 6.45 and she's sitting there in, in her bed knitting and holding her book open with her toe. What <laughs> joyful just time to one spend after the with, with herself. Knits. Kn knits, yeah. She just got into mean, crocheting I a lot too. I love that. You should tell wow. her, like, if you haven't already, how much you appreciate that she's really investing in the things that make her happy. You know, yeah. a lot of people don't do that, even as adults. Like, we find excuses. We just don't make the time to do that. So it's a good practice that she's preparing for her future to make sure that she spends time right. doing those things. Because yeah, right. you have to, because as adults, we split up our personality. I was just telling Savannah, Savannah has a young daughter, Elena, and she looks like the Gerber, Davies, uh, Gerber baby. But as a mother... I can only speak for myself. Like I have to, I went from Rita to being a wife. Then I became a mother. Mm -hmm. And then I had to then listen to everybody and to tell me how to parent. And then I became a boss. I became a coworker. And like, you have to kind of learn how to split personalities in a way to deal with all those people. And then when you have children, it's like your personality doesn't matter anymore. You have to cater to your family because they are number one. You make sure they're happy, that they feel safe, and that they're healthy. And to what limit do you do that? I've had some really uncomfortable conversations in the name of protecting my children, and that includes my parents and Marcus. Yeah. You know, but like, you just, you gotta do it. So then I just had like a mental breakdown when I was 41, and I just was like, enough. I'm not doing this for anybody. I don't No is my standard answer. Yes is my exception. Right. And I'm going to make time for my kids. I'm going to make time for my husband and make time for me. So the things that I enjoy doing, I do a lot. Yeah. So, I mean, my perfect Saturday night, Friday night is immediately putting my pajamas on <laughs> and watering my plants. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Then I want to Just eat. wild. Just wild and crazy. Just <laughs> glass of water. Do you have a glass of water? Ice water? No, like no. I like Trulies and white wine. Oh, oh nice. Before that, it was like uh, some event like Every, twice a week. No, they were like, I would go to evening events yeah. at least three times. In, oh, really? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And before 2020, because I just felt so, I felt so much FOMO that I had to be everywhere and do everything mm -hmm. and be seen with this person and introduce myself to that person and all this stuff. And while in hindsight, it did really great for our business. Sure. Um, 
now I'm just, I'm in a really great position where I work with really great people that get me and get Marcus and Mm -hmm. like, if I don't want to do anything, I don't feel obligated to do it. Well, there's going to be a lot of podcasts after (laughs) this one. They're going to be asking you to be on there. Yeah. So feel free to say no to I all really those ones kn- too. Yeah, <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I love all the other podcasts just wait to see yeah. who we have on, and then they just start harassing. Yeah. I, I mean, I really love doing podcasts with Marcus because we get to talk about you know where we came from, and it's really awesome to reflect on how much we've accomplished in six, seven, eight years. I mean, we've right. gone from not being able to afford a Christmas tree to you know having a Christmas tree. That we don't have to um, water. It's right. fake and pre lit. <laughs> <laughs> well, is it, so is there something to the feminine energy and masculine energy component? We talk about this a lot, but masculine energy is kind of needed in business, where you're making decisions quickly, mm-hmm. you're you're arguing, you're deciding on things. There's confrontation, and then what what I would see is feminine energy, where you're relaxing you don't have to make a decision kind of the masculine energy would be i want this versus the feminine energy would be i don't want that give me an example well yeah to get in that quick you know, with us. like food so, yeah restaurants mm-hmm. as, as far as hotel trundle goes or a relationship well bo- well that's what my what i found being married to my wife who's a chiropractor and we work together all the time is okay there's at work, she has to make decisions. She has to be on. She has to say, yes, no, we're doing mm-hmm. this. We're not doing that. I don't care if you disagree. This mm-hmm. is the way that it's going to be. I like her. Whereas <laughs> at home, although it's it's tiring for her. Yeah. And But then at home, she likes to just say, I don't want that. I don't want to do this. I don't feel like that. I mm-hmm. and, and where do you want to eat? Where do you want to eat? I don't care. What do you want to do? It doesn't matter. Where should we go? I don't really know. Like, mm-hmm. do you know, we went on vacation uh, a few weeks ago. She didn't know even where, not only did she not know the hotel, she didn't know when we were leaving or where we were going. <laughs> uh, we, we probably could be really yeah. good friends because I'm the same way. Like yeah. well, you're I exhaust a million days, you know, as a business owner and thinking about us. Cause yeah. you know, well, you never stop thinking about it. Right. Yeah. Right. Hey, you're sitting at home, you're dreaming about, you know, oh, I got to do this and that. And we, well, you know. I, I think for Marcus and I, I don't know if this for everybody but like we have very different lanes that we stay in work-wise he does lots of operations in the majority of our hr and then i do the fun part of hr and new hires and payroll and then i do everything marketing yeah and so sometimes those roles kind of cross but we discuss mostly logistics versus the decision because i'm able to make my decisions he makes his decisions and we're Cause it's all under the same goal of, you know, our family. And so that, I mean, sometimes we definitely disagree. It's usually him telling me I can't spend money on something, but I respectfully <laughs> and professionally <laughs> give him the I, courtesy. She says that because I do all the financials. Too, right. Yes. So. right. So. But I'm aware. Yeah. yeah. That's one thing I'm working on. <laughs> girl to- math. Have you heard, seen the trend about girl math? No. Tom can probably explain it better. No. Well, oh, I'm sure Tom can. Yeah, he's, he's an expert on girl math. <laughs> no, it's it's like it's like something's on sale, so they buy it. Be- like bogos. <laughs> yeah, and it's yeah, like, like I save this much money. It's like I made. Yeah, they spent they, they, they think yeah. they made money on it. It's like no, it's not a math. Well, word. ours. Uh, yeah, I, th- I don't think it's going to be an ongoing battle. Like <laughs> for me, it's you know let's let's have more money because we spend less money. And Rita's right. like. No, we're not going to make more money unless we spend more money. Right. Yeah. I see. Yeah. 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 Like it's different in operations. You want to think that way, but in marketing, it's different. You have to pay to play. I mean, you just have to. Uh, Yep. And, um, but you know, it, it's a balance. I mean, we both have a good understanding of what we want and we. There's a meat in the middle. Yeah. So I mean, like with everything, we go up and down, but right now we're at an up and it's going well. Nice. Yeah. How do you, so like with that, do you, I feel like you guys have really good taste. And so when you're looking at furniture and like you're as hotels, how do you guys make those decisions? And like, what is the vision process behind that to like make things look incredibly expensive? And maybe they are, I don't know. Maybe they are very expensive too, but <laughs> dealing with the operation side of it is. Yeah. If you're only expanding five rooms, it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You need to get like to a certain mark, like fifty rooms or more, and you get that bulk discount. Gotcha. Yeah. So there's, there's Rita handles all. Yeah, I do all the interiors. Yeah, yeah. And um, 
So when we do larger projects, we work with an interior design firm, um, which I used to work with when I was doing nice. my internship. Ooh, who's that? Pond Interiors. Okay. They'd be great to interview. Pond? Just like Pond. Yeah, P-O-N-D. Um, um, we work based with out of Atlanta, but they're an architecture firm too. They're like full service firm. Pond, yeah, Big full service. Firm. They have engineering <laughs> and everything. Um, I used to, we actually opened the hospitality studio when I was working there. Um, but Anadis and Hart know me from us working together. And so I usually go in to a project having a very clear vision of what I'm, what my inspiration is. Yeah. And it's always about our boys. They're seven and nine, really? um, Easton and Vaughn. Mm-hmm. And so like for Flutterwing, which is our five room expansion on main street that we opened up. Um, in February, it when I look at the space, I see the summer of 2023 because at that time, I really, like at the beginning of the summer, I said, okay, I want to do something with the boys. It's just the three of us, not with Marcus because Marcus gets all the like yeah. sports and all the like things and he goes outside and plays with them and I'd rather smuggle in bed and watch a movie, you know, mm-hmm. or let's bake a, bake a cake or, you know, draw or paint or whatever. And so um, we're all into fossils, like shark's teeth hunting. And so we started there. So we went on some shark tooth excursions in Charleston. It was so wonderful. And then we got into crystals and we actually went to a couple crystal really? mines and dug up yeah. our own crystals, and which is transformative. I highly recommend it. Um, there are two very close by in North Carolina. Uh, when you pull out a beautiful rock from the earth that you had to dig it's just magical. It's just like you can't even believe that this thing it's is among all there. of this. Right. And um, so we did that together. And so the interiors of the Flutterwing is very um, gemstone, like muted gems, like amethyst and citrine colors <coughs> and um, the striations of geodes and lots of patterns that would remind you of fossils and and gemstones and things like that so when i look around i'm like wow it's like a little time capsule of our summer together <coughs> so, and they're all my my boys are always my inspiration for everything and so if i ever feel like when i start a design project i just think about the kids and what they're That's into cool. and like hotel trundle has a lot of dinosaurs and legos mm-hmm. because at the time and they still are obsessed with dinosaurs and legos um yeah it's just that's How super interesting. Me. So you like have a theme essentially and you go off of, I imagine. So you like you, you immersed yourself in the gemstone space. Mm-hmm. And then from that, you kind of see colors and different things. And that's how yeah. you create a room or. Yeah. Well, like for, for Flutterwing, for instance, <coughs> I think it's subconscious. Um, I was just really drawn to those things because those things made me happy. And those colors made me happy and those patterns and, and, you know, artwork or whatever it was, it was just reminded me of the fun we were having with our kids. And so it all just kind of comes together. Yeah. But like for that, we our dens, which were our resident style lodging, um, they're very similar to Airbnb, um, which are sold on our website as well. Hoteltrundle.com. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, we're... Plug. Yeah. Well, we, we, and we want to plug it yeah. because you should tell everybody where you are and okay. what it looks like sure. and what their options are yeah. when they stay. So, well, for the dens, um, there, we have a three bedroom and two bath and then it's a duplex. And then on the other side is one bedroom, one bath. And those are called the honeybee and, um, the cutie pie. Cause those are nicknames I call my babies, my boys. Gosh, if they knew I was calling them babies, they'd, they'd die. <laughs> Cute, is cutie pie the younger one? They're both my cutie pies. Oh, yeah. both cute. They're both yeah. pies. Universal. Yeah, they're both my honeybees too. And so when I was um, designing those, they gave me the base color. So one of them is green and one of them is like um, like a brick red. And so I just kind of went off of those colors to design everything around that. They're really beautiful. You guys should come check them out sometime. Yeah. Are it, what's your home like? Is it very? <laughs> is it similar to your hotels? No. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I like plants. It's got a lot of oxygen. In it. Yeah, we have very clean air. I love plants. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I think our house has evolved because, as as I have, like, I mean, in a way, is it's historic. Yeah, we live in a yeah, 1936 but, house. We oh, love wow. our home. We love yeah, it. Yeah, nice. Cotton Town and 
Like we're it's actually been renovated moving. twice. Oh gosh, we haven't told anybody that yet, but I told Savannah. We found a house. Um, well, <laughs> inspections. Are this yeah, week. inspections yeah, yeah. are Thursday. It's not. But it's we not just lost it. our dog a few weeks ago. His name mm. was Guinness. He was my first baby, and you know, it just really, um, it was sad. So we buried him in the backyard, and we planted these beautiful snowball um, plants yeah. around where we buried him. And when I look out of the window, um, I can see those, and I'm just like, this is. Okay, this is it. I, t- I remember telling Marcus, I'm like, okay, this is it. We're not going to move. We're not going to look at any more houses. Mm. Um, and I told him that, I think, Wednesday. A week and a half ago. A week and a half ago. And we've had renovation drawings since 2020 Yeah. F- to yeah, expand our house. Because we knew the boys, they share a room right now. They need um, separate bedrooms. And so we're like, okay, this is it. We have looked. Gonna, we keep looking at houses and nothing works. And nothing like, works because you, you can find like, the house right. that you love. Right. So we were planning on buying a lot and building, you know, whenever the boys graduated high school. And then Monday morning, this house shows up on my feed because um, of our realtor. Her, her name's Jill Moylan. And I love her. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, this is. Let, let me look. So I scroll through and I'm like, oh, Marcus, let's go look at this house. <laughs> and then, because. Looked on Monday, offered it on Thursday. Yeah. No kidding. Accepted yeah. Thursday night. Wow. And I, I think <laughs> when we sent the offer in, there was another couple making the offer also. And um, I wrote them a letter and I told them, and I'm like, your house is beautiful. When I walk in, I can see, you know, we're getting another puppy in June and his name's going to be Cheddar. And I'm like, we can see our kids running around. Just, you went emotional, right? On I them. did yeah. because it's just such. My an emotion- wife did the same yeah. thing. I mean, it matters. Yeah, and 100%. because the the reason why I told that story about Guinness is because I just thought that was going to be our home that we were going to raise our kids in until they moved away from college. Yeah, and it just so fast. However, and this was a unicorn house for us. It was so rare. It has. Tell me, everything. it's out in the northeast. Tell me, you guys are coming to the northeast. No. no. Oh God! Nah, it's too far. It's so great out I here. I love Nobody the Northeast. Knows it about here. Right, we, the, I used to come. Be, oh guys, we, our house right now is like a mile from the hotel, so it's great. And yeah. we drive, we drive right, past right. the dens, the right. duplexes, like mm-hmm. to get there. So we like, you know, yeah, see everything. Yeah, it, I'm, yeah. I'm, it's, it's not bittersweet. That much further, it's bittersweet. All right. Yeah, all right. So it's exciting too. So, are you gonna move the dog? No. No. You're not yeah. going to take them We're going we're to keep that <laughs> house. We're, we're keeping that house. house. Oh, you're keeping that yes. house. Yes. Yeah. Like that that oh, was gotcha. what, when our, our dog passed away two years ago, and we did the same thing, buried in the back. And yeah. my wife said, we're never moving from mm-hmm. here because <laughs> Zeus, Zeus is here. Aww. I was like, that might change. And yeah. yeah, and we got a puppy. But I mean, six months? No. How long will it be? June? It'll be like four. Two, four months. So I'm quick math. I don't even yeah. know if that's right. I, I was good for like waiting a year. That's why I pushed for two years <laughs> hard, yeah. and it was hard was to get to two years. Randy made his family sign contracts for a new dog on oh, what well, he's going to be contributing. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we had the same thing with our kids. We were going to do on really? video. It's like if you want yeah. this dog, this is what oh, I love do. nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I haven't picked it up a hey. single piece of dog poop, <laughs> <laughs> and our dog is six you months old. Full- it's in the contract. Yep. What uh. is what are the like penalties for not? Um, Oh, you know, the, do- the dog gets shipped agree- off. Yeah, I get rid of it. Gone. Oh, the dog has to suffer? <laughs> Gonzo. If they don't do their jobs, <laughs> the dog is gone. Aww. At least What's that's the what they name? think. No more knitting. Luna. Yep. No more knitting. No more knitting. <laughs> oh, that's my sister's dog's name. What, what kind of it? dog is it? It's a boxer. Oh, yeah. But she's a real. She's black, and she's really little. Okay. Um. So I'm kind of okay with that. But yeah, when she was like born, little, little... Well... I don't that, that doesn't really affect me. So I, I have no I have no clue. I haven't had to feed the dog or clean up after the dog oh, or get great. up in the night with the dog or I mean really nice. if I'm a home alone when um which I really like her. I mean she's growing on me as she's become like a better dog yeah. and like settled down a little bit. I I really like her. Well, that's great. Well, I want to hear <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> He's Tom's flabbing. going through puberty. Pu- <laughs> He's going through puberty. Uh, pl- flab and puberty. Flabbing, yep. Um more about how do, how do you guys manage everything? I feel like there's a lot of moving parts. Yes. So maybe tell us about your people, your organization. Like, how do you keep it all with kids and everything? How do you say your prices? Pricing. Mm. Uh, well, we we have a great team. 
at the hotel. We have our, our executive housekeeper has been there since we before we've opened. That's April awesome. Steele. That's awesome. April awesome. Steele. She's employee number three. Yeah. Wow. Um, and then uh, most of our staff has been there for at least two years, so, mm-hmm. which is a long time for. So you, know, you guys do us. well with HR then. Yeah, yes, we I do. Think we, I mean, we, we just to. take pride and like really kind <laughs> of trying to take care stuff. of our team really well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they are, the, they are the heart of the hotel. So um, we, we have a you know manager there, executive housekeeper, kind of front desk team, back at front yeah. house, back at house kind of thing. Yep. Um, and they also help with like cleaning the short-term rentals. And sure. Kind of like a little extra um, for housekeeping. Yeah. Um, I guess as far as... Uh, just ongoing operations and rates and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and kind of, I'm also curious, just like a day in the life of you. Like, what is, I think people are interested in like, what does it look like? You guys wake up and then, like, I just think of like, there's so many things. How do you guys <laughs> get that to like, this is what's happening here, here, and here? Well, and- I, I think Rita said that our lane's really different. So mine, I like get up and I know I got to do this, this, this. And like, I yep. you know, what just can't, like property taxes and, you know. Other taxes. Marcus I is handle at work all the eight thirty every day. Yeah, yeah. I handle yeah. getting uh, all the bills paid and the uh, bookkeeping and all yeah. that kind of stuff. And just yeah. like that takes the majority of my time. And then it's um, you know, managing a team, checking what I like to walk around the property and see yeah, everybody and nice. say, Hey, how's everything going? And you know, keep everything personal. Um and mine uh it, it, then managing rates and stuff. We do use a, a revenue management software, uh is that kind of shops, you know, and, and changes our oh, rates. Gotcha. Um, and we can kind of grade it based on like, you know, okay, this property, whatever their rates are at, we kind of grade right. ours differently. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so that's that's helped a lot. We started that a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, the majority of mine is like boots on the ground at the property, um, just financials, bookkeeping, bills. Yeah, customer staff. issues. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the calls at, whenever time you know two in the morning or you know one of the like gosh when i hear the phone ring when it's a three in the morning call like no the worst worst phone call would be coming in at 11 10 11 15 oh yeah because then the night auditor hadn't shown up the night auditor has not come in third shift 11 to 7 a.m and I that's like, the worst call i'm yeah. like getting ready to go to sleep and i got to get up and stay awake for eight hours like, so you can't you oh, don't go geez. to bed before 11 a.m or 11 um, p.m ever no i mean i've tried i started Going to bed sooner, but yeah, we well, got a guy that sleeps in the bathtub. One of our friends, <laughs> he does, he sleeps, he's never all brought the a time pillow with him. Why? I don't, it's comfortable. I'm like, I don't get it. Please explain. No. You'd answer a lot, but he of didn't questions turn the water on, does he? He turns yes. the water oh, on, does he? <laughs> hit by the shower the whole time. That, one of his questions when Maybe he wants to stay with you is, Do <laughs> you have name? a permanent Maybe water? Ryan <laughs> Berlin, Ryan <laughs> Berlin. Oh my god, it's Yes. Ryan. Yes. I yes. always sign Ryan. one of those things. No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to cross check and say he's on yeah, the blacklist don't, now. Don't but let he'll he'll get up and be like, oh man, you guys have the gr- best hot water heater because it I slept for out, yeah. six hours and it was oh warm the entire time. What a tankless jo- heater. One, yeah. Today is Earth Day, by the way. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. And shame. That's not right. Shame Ryan Berlin. Yeah. Just a waste. <laughs> wow. Anyway. All kinds of stories. All kinds of stories. Wow. You um, get the flood. Yeah, floods. Please ask I him floods. why. I will be following up with you. I, I'll, you know what? I'll do a video. I'll have him send a video and we'll please post do. it. Because oh, even video. better. We need to We need to understand. Nobody understands Maybe there's it. Yeah. a group of people like it's, Ryan Berlin that can be. help yeah, each other. Yeah, right. It always seems like a sensory water. thing. Like you want to, like, like you're under a waterfall or something. Yeah. Now, when's bicep time though? You didn't mention when you're getting your working on your biceps. I Armed tend in. to go about three o'clock each day. Oh, three p.m. Yeah, I it's can't work time. out in the morning. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Workout person. So I, I like to get it over with. Get in there early. Uh, I, I, I'm usually bringing the kids to school, so I get up, we're out, I get to work eight thirty, and then three three thirty, I'm going to the gym. Yeah. yeah. Cup of ju- Joe with uh, monk fruit sweetener. I, oh. Now I will. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta get some of that. Yeah. What is so a lot of people <laughs> I'm guessing come to your hotel for like honeymoons, anniversaries, like staycations. <laughs> yeah, I wedding, staycation stuff there. like that. Yeah. Is is there any um times when people are being too loud or freaky or when they're 
they're bringing things in that can't you're like you're like you cannot still. put that swing up in the in our room. Yeah, we, <laughs> I haven't we, had that one. I haven't uh, had that one. No. We we uh, shouldn't talk about stuff like yeah. that. I mean the the weddings, but we like having the wedding. It's actually great. It, the size of the hotel, we get a lot of weddings that block the whole hotel. Right. And that's, oh, that's yeah, cool. the best case yeah, scenario because yeah. if they're all being loud or whatever, they know that Uncle Jim's always loud. Sure. And, you know, hey, yeah. Yeah, quiet. Yeah, yeah. And stuff. That is nice. So, Uncle yeah. Tom. We usually say like or Uncle, Uncle Tom. Tom. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has that weird uncle. <laughs> yeah. um, what my favorite thing is, is like Friday afternoons, if you ever want like a pick me up, come and sit in our lobby with a beer or a glass of wine. And I tell this to people all the time. It's so nice to see people that haven't seen each other in years and years and years. And it's just like when they're all coming, checking in at the same time, it's just pure joy and tears right, and laughter and catching up. And it's just the sweetest thing to sit back and watch because it's like you're watching people, you know, like in the airport. Have you all seen that movie, Love Actually? Yeah. It's been at, a while. I, the, I think okay. I've seen that too, but I don't know. Oh, Who's the main character? Who's the guy? Um, oh, there's a bunch. Of Hugh. Them. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Yeah. Yeah. There are a bunch of actors. Yeah, yeah. Um, but at the end, when they're rolling the credits, they are videotaping. It's a bunch of video work about people hugging each other that they're coming to pick up their family and stuff. And we watch that movie like three times every Christmas. And it still brings me to tears because you can just feel how happy people are. And I'm so happy that we get to be the space that that kind of energy right. harbors. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that, you know, I'm a big believer in vibrations and crystals and, the energy that we live within and around and it's just it's, um, it's yeah. really pretty cool nice it's great tell people about that because so my wife and i did a staycation there it was awesome oh good and we did the uh it was one of the packages with the hampton street, hampton street vineyard yes Classic night out tell people about that because i don't think enough local <laughs> people or maybe they do but i was like yeah this is awesome and you guys how do you like get those packages and the kind of thinking behind all that well, we're, we're working on changing some of those, and we actually we don't do one with Hampton Street anymore. They've just, uh, I think they're opening another location, so the one of the owners that likes to yes. kind of handle that doesn't yes. have the time now, so we're sure. trying to find another mm -hmm. uh, restaurant partner to work with. I'm um, talking to Tim with Lula Drake, yeah. um, and we used to work with him uh, prior to COVID, and then, um, yeah, so we, we've kind of paused Classic Night Out, but... So how we come up with the packages is that's kind of me and my team. And it's more of like, so most boutique hotels have a restaurant component yeah. or like a really nice swag shop component. We don't really have that we stuff. Have so no soul. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> somebody. <laughs> we were at a boutique hotel conference and one of the speakers was like, uh, a hotel without a food and beverage has no soul. <laughs> and we're like, oh, okay. Yeah, it's really yeah. Time to go. And we were just like, yeah. Oh, Enjoy boy. your soul. I don't want the nightmare. I know, food right? Right? Restaurant. Restaurants <laughs> are um, just a whole nother animal. Right. But um, so we don't have that amenity to offer people like, oh, come and enjoy. And then our such and such chef and a fresh blah, blah, yep. blah. So we partner with um, all of the great businesses on Main Street to offer those amenities. Mm -hmm. And um, we try to create things that will... Um, kind of speak to a wider range, a wide range of people. So outdoor people, people that like to stay in. So you have a movie night in where you just get popcorn and candy, and we have like uh, spring on the Congaree, so you can do you know <coughs> Riverwalk stuff. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's mainly you know um, an extra amenity for people to take advantage of. So if they come to Columbia, they are um, not just seeing Main Street; they're able to see more of Columbia. Yeah. Love that. They're cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I had three last questions. One, what is a trundle? And maybe I should have looked that up. Is that a so like a trundle bed? I think they usually kind of hide underneath something, you pull it out and pops up. Oh. A trundle bed. Yeah. Trundle also has another meaning. It means to laborious laboriously and loudly move through a space. Trundles through the space. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's what we like to do. Make nice. some noise. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And then, then we, the trundle, was, the trundle. Well, the, the name was more from the bed. Yeah. Got, My yeah. mom yeah. named the hotel. We were named, <coughs> we were trying to na come up with an acronym, a short acronym for something on Taylor. So the last letters needed to be OT. And we came up with cot, but obviously that's not, you know, the sexiest of words. <laughs> um, so my mom was like, well, what about hotel trundle? 
And I was like, hmm, okay, trundle, trundle. Because I grew up on a trundle bed. And that Man. bed, that trundle bed is in the basement of Hotel Trundle. Wow. It's like a, I mean, a death trap. Because yeah, it used to be one of those ones that you would like, it's all metal. You lose a limb yeah. in it. Yeah. yeah. And it just like and creaks snapped. out and these like springs that yes. just are, mm-hmm. could probably kill people now, but. Um, and that's different than a futon, correct? Right. Like correct. A, I think of the old futons where like your toe gets in that metal and you're, you lose it. Eek. Yeah. No. Um, question two, do people steal a lot of stuff from the hotel? Yes. Yes. And what's, yeah. Like, I mean, with yes. our clientele, they steal as much, but I mean, yes, they'll take sometimes the soap dishes and Stuff. I had the like cutest pint glasses man, and things like no, that. No, I had yes, I had the cutest the little, robe hook in the back of the bathroom, uh, like the coat just hook random. That gets on the door. My hand, the things I've like hand picked out, and we only have one or two of right. that you can't find again. Mm-hmm. So I've got these really cute, like you know when you press the soap down, there's always that little drip. Yes. So it was like a little soap catcher, right. and I got it from Etsy, and it was like this handmade pottery thing with a little, but inside of it was looked like. Uh, a pond and there's this little duck in it. It's really cute. And somebody took that. Somebody and took this it. This is why you can't have nice things. Exactly. You know? But I bet whoever <laughs> took it owns a Jeep because oh, they're duck people. Yes. And I'm pretty sure I know who took uh, it. It was the temporary FedEx mm, UPS guy. My, my <laughs> mom makes custom pottery stuff all the time. Really? She might be able to hook you up with some trundle stuff. That mm. would be amazing. Oh yeah. I'm actually well, you can starting. Your pottery I know. I nice. mean, my oh. best friend. Raven, who we've mentioned, we're doing things that make us happy. And we signed up for a pottery class at the Columbia Art um, Center. Sweet. It starts in May. I'm so excited. Wow. Sweet. But that's cool. I'd love to see what your mom does. Yeah. She just likes making making it. I love it. She just she just does started it doing she's it 10 makes years her happy. ago. That, yeah. Makes her happy. That's, she, she just does pottery yeah. all day and just does her thing. Yeah. But it's not, but she's got better at it. She's been doing it for 10 or 15 years now. So she's got progressively better and better. And she'll never sell. She said she'll never sell any piece because it'll take away the fun of doing it. Mm -hmm. So she just likes making it and giving it away. Oh my God, that would be great. Even better. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we'll take 10. I'll volunteer. I'll volunteer. (laughs) I'll I'll help her to do whatever. Yeah. I I think it's great because life is just so short. I mean, I don't know if either one of you, because people just don't know what people are going through. Oh, yeah. And um, there are a lot of things happening in all of our lives that can really bring us down and bring us under. But that's why I feel like at Hotel Trundle, we want our guests to make the magic in every moment happen. Like, mm-hmm. not we, you can choose to make your moments magical, which is great. I mean, like, you can kind of say that. But, like, being intentional about choosing to make that moment magical or finding the magic in that moment is what we want to do for Hotel Tron- with Hotel Toronto. We want you to come here and we want to help you do that with really great interior and ex- guest experience. So it's awesome. Life's short. And then, so what's the just grand vision is my last kind of thought to leave the people with on where do you guys see this going? Have you thought five, 10, 15 years down the road and, and maybe even just talk about from Hotel Trundle, the Flutter Wing and the dens and all the stuff. Well, we've tried. Um, or Vista. Yeah. So we've tried to do some bigger, bigger projects and uh, we've designed hotels in a lot of o- old buildings in Columbia and we've had some and they always tend to get like 99% of the way there and they just fall apart. Like yeah. They don't work. Um, so then we started kind of chipping away doing smaller ones like the dens that were in our same neighborhood as our house that like Rita happened to be driving by when they're putting the for sale sign in the ground, you know? Um, and then the flutter wing, which is on main street. So we kind of smaller bites. Um, but we've always said that we didn't want to have 20 hotels. Right. Like, it was just, that would just be right. my parents much. had many, many hotels, which yeah. is many, many, ho- just headaches, and nightmares. Right. Um, but like maybe like, three mm-hmm. you know um so we're we have that property in the vista that we're looking at nice. um doing so we've been kind of having preliminary meetings and design stuff with that and uh then maybe something else so mm-hmm. i mean i think if we were we get there you know that's so good. Our, a, our yeah. original goal was yeah. always to um be able to to get have the resources to show our kids the world and 
right. like, take them on trips. And that was like a big motivator for us. And to be able to have, you know, some of that flexibility, not saying that it's not any less stressful. Um, right. you know, sometimes it's, it's really hard to, to get away from the business. Cause I'm, you know, so we're so hands on, like, I'm like, if I'm not there, I feel like something's not going to mm-hmm. go right. Right. You know? Right. So sometimes it, <laughs> it's tough to step away and yeah. just enjoy your time. Um, yeah, so we had three real, really big pillars of why we did hotel turn, why we decided to even take the risk. And that was one, having the resources and means to show our kids the world because travel was so important on the bigger perspective yeah. of life, what you have, what you don't have, what you can do, all of those things. And then the other one was to build a dream because, you know, it's a unicorn. Like we never thought we'd be able to do this. And it was like just a classic chase your dream kind of story. And then the third one was to become a goodwill citizen of our community, you know, like be impactful, create positive change, be, you know, bring something to Columbia that they didn't know they wanted. Right. And so that's kind of what we continue to do slowly. And um, it's been great. And Marcus and I have always been, cause we knew, cause we, cause we hustled for so long for two and a half years. And, you know, that two buck chuck will forever be grateful for that. But um, it's like we know what we want out of life and what we what the things that will make us happy. So we're not trying to make a million billion dollars. Mm -hmm. We want to be happy. You know, we want to be able to go on trips with our kids and not worry. We want to buy the things that we want to buy within reason and not stress about right, it right and we don't drive like super expensive cars we don't have a giant house we you know like <coughs> we just want to be happy with our children sure. we want them to be healthy like all mm-hmm. people do That's great and so i think 20 hotels would be something that is definitely something we don't want we just want to go to work and be happy mm-hmm. yeah. and enjoy it when the day that i wake up and stop like of course some days i'm like damn i gotta do payroll today but the days where I have to wake up and I don't want to go to work or I don't want to do something's wrong. Sure. Yeah. You know, so that's great. That's great. I so how do people find you then if they want to work with you, if it's a restaurant that wants to partner with you or a business in Columbia? Mm-hmm. How do you do you want them to email you? Go to your website? What does that look like? So if it's marketing related, they can email me, read at hoteltrundle.com, and I'll probably then promptly defer to Savannah. <laughs> or uh raven savannah's email address i'm giving it out yes. storyteller and at, your cell phone yeah <laughs> storyteller cell phone at hoteltrundle.com <laughs> and then raven is my right hand woman so she's right hand at hoteltrundle.com and then if it's any operations like restaurants partnerships you know uh, like that would be hmm? so the part uh, i guess the restaurant I, if we're gonna do packages oh i'm stuff. thinking that you <laughs> okay i'm sorry i thought you meant like opening a restaurant, <laughs> like, not, like oh. on like a package I, level. Well, I guess maybe that could no, be. No, 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 no. Like, that would just be a, we're looking at him. Him. Yeah. Well, I was just thinking of all the cool ones that are opening yeah, in yeah. Columbia. Make there's, I know me. there's Thai one, yeah. the Thai one that opened right downtown. Yes. Cantina is mm-hmm. always great. Yeah. Bourbon, all those ones. Yeah. Oh my God. Cow Thai. Delicious. Mm-hmm. And the owner's I've name been is Sunshine. That one too. Huh? S- story with that too. Yeah. Not the restaurant. Yeah. I've been there a few times. They're great. They're good. What do you get? So the first time I went, I went, I got pad thai okay. because my wife and I went on our honeymoon to Thailand. Oh, we and did, you? did yeah. you? Yeah. And we were so broke. We just took any money that we got as a present and that's all the money we had. And that's not what we did. Yep. It, and uh, <laughs> pad thai was always the cheapest. Thing. It was like 30 okay. baht or whatever for yeah. a pad thai. So we would just get pad thai every time and split it. Yeah. Um, so I have a lot of that's good funny. memories with yeah. that. But now I've been trying out other stuff too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about you guys? What's your go-to? I like the green curry. Green curry? Yeah, yeah. my wife likes that too. Mm-hmm. The pad kapow, I think it was more like minced chicken, like ground chicken. Mm, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. And, and then anyone, all right, final question. Anyone that you think we should have on the podcast or anyone that oh you know that's gosh. helped you or that you know that's that's in, so really interesting? So many people. Um, pond Interiors. Yeah, Pond Interiors. Yeah, that sounds um, cool. Lee Mashburn was our contractor. Oh, for build the build-out? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Robert and Chris were our attorneys and also our partners. Uh, they're Robert Lewis and man, if you want more of like a professional oh, feel. Oh, you know we let, need that. Yeah. And Janie Campbell um, and John Sher. Our preservationists. Yeah. Our preservationists. One, one is works with um, Roger Lewis and then John Sher is a preservationist with Historic Columbia. Sweet. Wealth of knowledge. Really? Um, just some really cool people. Josh Cox with Bricker and Beam. He's got a great story. Yeah. Um, Angela <laughs> Sellers with Fit Columbia. She's got a great story. Uh, I mean, just everybody, everybody has a great story. I'm sure you guys have a great story. I'd love to hear it sometime. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, anybody. That's anybody? great. That's, that's, no, a, that's a lot. Great. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, Luke, Tim well, Garner cool from. Like, and we Luke haven't had any of those people. No, there. I, it's, it's a whole a lot new of times we'll that we haven't. A lot of people know. that we've had, but those are all like new people. You should. It, um, touch base with um, Jessica from Spotted Salamander, and then Sarah Simmons, Sarah Simmons yeah. um, with um, City Small Grid Sugar and City Grit, and then Tim Gardner from Lula Drake. They've all been either currently or formally selected as semifinalists for the James Beard um, wow. nomination really? award. Tim That's is massive. going June ninth. It's huge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. huge for Columbia that yeah. we have three people from our city. Receiving that great honor. I mean, it's amazing. There are all these incredibly um, talented people around town. Yeah. I'm Um, super pumped that you caught that you said we're HR nightmares too. That's yeah, you are. (laughs) If you were my client, I would fire you immediately. And it's you're too much of a liability. (laughs) Sorry. I know. Uh, well, thank you so much for being on here. Yeah, it's a good thing you signed everything already. (laughs) We're all set. Thanks, guys, for being on. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us. I feel sorry for you. (laughs) Here. We're here for the health of it. For the health of it.